Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, first thing before I start today's video, please know I've got more than the usual huskies on today. Um, I talk non-stop every day. My phone usually starts ringing at about quarter to six, quarter to seven in the morning, um, and it doesn't stop all day, some days. Today, I've just, it's now quarter past one in the afternoon, so it's 1.15 p.m. My phone started this morning about 6.30, and I've also done a two-hour development class where I was talking non-stop, so please understand, my voice does get quite um, raspy. There you go, I'll use raspy. So I just wanted to clarify that first. Today's video is all about how hell works. So the first thing that we have to do is identify that when we die, there's actually three options that we can become or go to or be, okay? The first one that we all know and where I went was heaven. So the people who go to heaven are called spirits. They can pop in and see us occasionally, yeah, and they can give us our messages like our feathers and other messages to say and they let us know that they're with us, okay? So then we go into the ones who don't go to heaven. They are the ones who stay earthbound and for generally two reasons. They stay here. They are called ghosts. Okay. There are two reasons that I put into my new book, Ghosts and Spirits, a um, conscious connection, I think I'm calling it um, at this point. But they're the ghosts. Okay. Then we have the third option. The ones who don't go to heaven, the ones who don't become a ghost, the ones that go uh, uh, south of the border. So first of all, we have to identify, is this place a real place? It's actually not. There's no island on some planet where people just land, okay? <clears throat> it doesn't work like that. It's not physical. It's energetic. So who goes there and why? Okay, first of all, I wish to let everybody know I did not go to hell or have a hellish experience when I died. The only way I know is because I was told about it from my great, 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 great grandmother, Karina, when I died and went to heaven in 2001. She and I spoke for over a year could have been two years based on the conversations that we had the lengths of the conversations so when she was explaining our life contracts and our life paths to me <clears throat> she actually said that some people have this perception of how they feel because any everything in heaven is an emotion okay if we hang on to love, gratitude, kindness, respect, and if we forward that out of us and it emits to everybody else like a pheromone, then there's a very good chance that we're going to go to heaven, right? If we hold it within us first. And that's why self-love is so important. And self-love is made up of things like self-respect, self-appreciation, self-acknowledgement, self-boundaries, and most of all, loving ourselves and appreciating who we are, right? Trusting ourselves, self-trust. So if we um, don't have these things within us, that's when our vibration can come down. You know, we all talk about raising your vibration so we're happy and we've got our dopamine levels of our rewards that we give ourselves and we acknowledge that we're self-reliant and we're self-responsible and self-appreciative and all the rest of them, right? But what happens is people lower their vibration by being negative. And that's where I want to talk about today with these negative behaviors that lead us into a hellish experience when we pass away. So today I'm going to go over to the TV show Lucifer. Lucifer, if you don't know it, it's presently on Netflix and it stars the amazingly gorgeous Tom Ellis. Okay, he plays the devil. He comes to Earth and he meets a detective by the name of Chloe. 
Chloe has an ex-husband called Dan and Chloe and Dan have a daughter. So in the last two episodes of season six, is because this is the roundup of the whole series, I don't think they're going to make another one after this one, Dan is killed and he goes to hell. So for thousands of years, because there's no time where he goes, remember? I went to heaven for five years in a blink of an eye here on earth. So he's in hell for thousands of years trying to work out why he didn't go to heaven. So Lucifer's having a chat with him this time, or I think it's one of the angels, and he says it's all about grudges and regrets and our shame and our guilt. So I want to elaborate on this today because when I was watching that the other day, you know, I had no voice for two days earlier in the week. So I actually caught up on a lot of TV shows and stuff and just having some me time, which, hello, we do need that self-care occasionally, correct? So there I was, camped out on my chair in the living room, watching Lucifer, <laughs> binging on Tom Ellis. Okay, hello. So back on point, because I just had a visual of his face with his wings on. Oh my God, it, it's an amazing show, okay? If you've watched it. So... <clears throat> it all made sense to me with what I was told from Karina. So the first thing I want to go there is, is what is shame? Shame is when we feel embarrassed by something that's happened to us in our past. Then we look at what are regrets and grudges. That's my neighbor's truck, by the way, who's just coming home from work. So please bear the background noise, okay? Regrets are when we feel bad, which is an emotion. We feel bad because we haven't done something in our past that we now wish that we had done. It might be saying something to somebody. Oh, I regret that I didn't let my dad know how much I loved him before he died. Okay, that's a regret. Or I regret that I married that guy when I could have married that guy. Okay, it's a regret. So what we do in our brain, <clears throat> bear with me because I've got a sore throat today, okay? Talking, <laughs> here I am talking. So what we do is we create this false reality within our mind of what that other situation would have been. So if you do regret saying things like, oh my God, Dad, I love you before he passed away, our brain creates that scenario or that experience where we've actually done it. If we had married the wrong guy, and we say, oh, really, I should have married Bob instead of his brother, Ben. <clears throat> we will create this false reality of what our life with the other brother would have been like. Okay. So we go through this systematic creation in our brain where we create situations where our life would have turned out better, which brings on shame and regrets and grudges because grudges are when we don't like how something has turned out so we blame someone else or something else because we didn't get what we wanted okay we get offended that's a grudge okay so look how many people right now have got a grudge people who wanted to go overseas to see their little sister get married how many people weren't afforded the opportunity to go and see their parents or grandparents in hospital because they weren't allowed there because of what's been going on over the planet for the last two years? So they have a grudge with their governments forbidding them to go, okay? This sort of stuff is a grudge, right? <clears throat> so when we hold on to regrets, grudges and shame, it becomes guilt because then... You know, let's just go there with that, exper um, that ex exercise I just said. There's Bob and Bill, Bob and Ben, Bob and Ben. I'll just say Bob and Ben. I married Ben and I realised five years later I should have really married Bob, right? So I have this regret. Oh, man, 
my life would have been so much better if I'd married Bob instead of Ben. Okay? So then our brain creates this scenario of how our life would have been. Oh, we would have had the three children. We could have traveled. We don't know all of this stuff would have happened. But our brain creates it anyway. Okay? So that's why it becomes a guilt trip. Because what happens is we're still married to Ben. Ben and Bob, right? False people. And our brain now makes us feel guilty because we're having all these fantasies about what would have happened in this other reality. Okay? So in the movie Lucifer, season six I'm talking about here, it's a TV show on Netflix. In the last episodes, um, the character who's called Dan, who's married, who was married to Chloe and they have a daughter, Dan gets killed and he goes to hell. And he's sitting there playing ping pong or table tennis. I don't know what you call it. You know, wherever you're from, you call it something else. So he's playing this for thousands of years in this reality of hell. So he end up, ends up getting the opportunity where he can become a ghost. An angel releases him and he becomes a ghost. So he, he actually possesses this really nasty guy, a serial killer. And he goes to where his daughter is on camp. She's in a camp, um, like a school excursion. So he goes up to her and she sees him now as this, this serial killer, right? Because it's not her father because it's just his spirit inside him. And Dan says to her, um, please know your dad did everything he could to make you a good life. Please know that he feels guilty about not being there for you and that he could have been a better father. So he's now identified what he's feeling guilty over. The little girl, who's about 15 years old, the daughter, she turns to this man who she doesn't know because of hello. <laughs> hello. She looks at him and she says, how dare you tell me about who my father was? My father was the best man out there. He was a police officer. He looked after me every day. So now we're talking about her perspective on on comparison to what Dan thought his perception was. So this little girl is virtually healing Dan's feelings of guilt over not being a good father. So as she talks to this man who's possessed by Dan, <laughs> please go and watch it if you've got it, Netflix, it's called Lucifer. It's awesome. Um, so Dan starts seeing the white light. You know, the white light, the tunnel. And he leaves this body and he goes to heaven. Because he's now healed those past hurts, which are our grudges, our regrets and our shames that all roll up into this guilt that we carry around with us. He released that because he's now realized he was a good father. He was doing the best possible job that he could do for to raising his daughter. So once he'd healed that perception, he went to heaven. Okay? So the more regrets and grudges, the more embarrassments, and ultimately the more guilt that we hang on to, the more we're going to create this guinea pig wheel where we overlay and replay over and over and over again millions and millions of times where we relive that past hurt and that's why anyone who's had near-death experiences where they have this hell experience a lot of them wake up like i did in 2001 and they say to themselves oh man I have to heal and forgive myself. So what do I teach? If you've watched my videos, you'll see I'm teaching not only what heaven is like and what we do there, I also teach how to get there. Because that's the second part of my book, The Teachings of Heaven. 
how to be more kind, generous, loving, understanding, empathic, and most importantly, more loving, not to just everybody else, but to ourselves. Because the only way that we could ever get self-appreciation, self-respect, self-love, is by forgiving ourselves for all those things that went wrong in our lives. Okay? One thing about me, I'll go there with a little story. When I was 15, I started working at McDonald's. I worked there for about two years until I finished high school. When I was 17, at the end of high school, one of the managers came up to me and he said, Linda, this other store is now for sale. Do you want to go halves in it with me? And we'll operate it together as managers. <clears throat> so back in the 80s, you know, it was about $150,000 I had to borrow to buy this McDonald's store. And I was advised by certain people in my circle not to do it because it was such a big investment back then. You know, we're talking a house you could buy for like $50,000 and this was $150,000. This store that I'm talking about, it sold about 10 years ago for $9 million. So someone said to me, one of my friends said to me one night, she said, do you have any regrets not buying that McDonald's? And I said to her, I don't do regrets. I don't do grudges. Most of all, I don't have shame. Because I acknowledge that at that time, I was only doing what I could for my best. I listened to the people who were advising me, who were only trying to look out for the best in me. Okay? So how could I ever blame myself for not taking on that role? And I said to them something very important. I said, imagine my life if I had bought that McDonald's when I was 17. I wonder what my life would have been like, but I'm not going to create that false reality of visualizing the house I could have owned or the car I had or where I went shopping, I'm not going to ever do that because it never existed. But what people do is they sit there and form this regret because they feel that they made the wrong decision. I personally could never tell myself I made a wrong decision because ultimately now that I'm 55 years old, I don't want to be anyone else other than now who I am. I am now in this position where I can work from home. I'm not um, contracted to an employment to, to an employer. I can I'm able to finance myself where I can do what I am passionate about, teaching others how to be their best. This person looked at me and she said, you know what, Linda, you're right. If you'd bought that McDonald's, you would have been working there like mm, 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day. You know, you could have gone on and had a heart attack. You could have gone on and met somebody who really did hurt you really bad. Well, I've already been killed. Does it get any worse? <laughs> See how I empower myself when I say that? I am so proud of what I've lived through. I am so grateful. And that's where I want you all to sit there and calculate. These last two years, look at how much depression and look at how much mental health has gone through the floor now. Or should I say through the ceiling? It's gone up. Because people are now blaming. They're blaming the governments. They're blaming their employer. They're blaming even their schools or whatever because they have this regret and grudge that's formed because they didn't get their own way. So we must take our ego out of it, guys. And we must sit here and we say to ourselves, you know what, I can't go to the shops today because it's not essential. Or I've got to wear my mask, but I, I've got a breathing condition which makes it worse, so I don't really want to go out. 
or I can't travel to see my family. I couldn't go to that funeral. I couldn't get over to that wedding. So instead of blaming someone else, look within yourself and heal it. So how do we heal it? Simply said, we say to ourselves, let it go. Let it go. How many times a day do people say, oh, let it go? What they're really saying is, stop thinking about what you can't do. If you can't go overseas to see your little sister get married, allow it to happen. Be grateful that she's getting married. And just sit there and say, do I really need to see it? I'll see the video. I'll see photos. But I really wanted to be there. Then let it go. You had no control over it. Because the main reasons why we have grudges, regrets, shame, and most of all, guilt, is because of control. I'm going to pause here for effect because that was big. So many people try and control situations. They don't get what they want. So they attack, they abuse, they get arrogant. Most of all, they get um, vandex, um, what is it, Vixa vexatious. They can get manipulative. Look how much cyberbullying is now going up because people aren't getting their way. Because they're egotistical, trying to control a situation. Okay? Let it go. Three words. Think about those three words. Because if we do hang on to those regrets, those grudges, that cause that shame and embarrassment, that ultimately leads to guilt, where we blame ourselves for things that have happened or we blame someone else for what's happened we're creating a perception of creating that false reality that we are going to relive over and over and over and over like a guinea pig wheel thousands of millions of trillions of billions of times over and that's what's called The teachings of heaven is the second part of my book. Let me just grab it. <clears throat> the teachings of heaven. How to get through all these negative behaviours. And in the back of it, I've got... See, this is the back half. The teachings of heaven. Look at all these chapters, techniques, tools, meditation techniques, how to pray, breathing techniques, daily affirmations, how to raise your vibration techniques, surrendering the past and healing all those grudges, regrets, embarrassments and guilts. So we go to heaven. So I talk about all the negative emotions and behaviours of how we form grudges. So there's the front table. I'll just put it up there so you can see the contents. You can pause the screen if you want. You know, I talk about the mirror effect, turning positive emotions and behaviours, how, how our self-emotions work, connecting with our self. And then I've got all these ones in there, guys, too. All the tools on how to get to this part of the book. When I died, I went to heaven. I see it every day. You know, I'll be honest, I've got a troll, stalker, whatever you want to call it. This person is leading themselves down this spiral of hatred where they're forming so many grudges and regrets blaming others for what that person is creating within themselves. 
I've reached out to this person many times over the past two years and they can't see it. They're stuck already in this hell loop. And the only way to get out of it is by saying, what did they do to create it? So whenever something happens in your life, guys, sit there and you say to yourself, is this something I did? Did I start that mandate? Did I cause that person to get the virus and then they died? That was just on the news. If you can honestly say no, that's great. Because I wish the best for everybody on the planet. You know, love and light to everybody. But if we say to ourselves, man, I actually did do that. Start to work it out. Self-reflect. Self-analyse yourself and say, then why did you do it? What else could have you done? And then you say to yourself, I am sorry. You don't have to say it to your neighbour who you hurt or your mother or your best friend or whoever. We say it to ourselves and we say, I am sorry for what I put myself through. And it lifts like a fog. And then you see that you weren't trying, you, you no longer have to control that situation. You no longer have to have that grudge or regret over past things that you tried to control. We can all go to heaven. Seriously. That's what I teach. So stay tuned, guys, because there is great things coming. Buckle up and come along with me on a ride. So on that note, I'll catch you all next time. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.